Round here, them guns get the last word. Net code is this huge thing that every single fighting game is trying to overcome. You would have thought this was like a boss battle in Elden Ring, the way these developers is struggling to take it down. Even if you focus on puzzle games like Tetris, like Puyo Puyo, they found out a way long before fighting games to establish a healthy online structure. And fighting games in the year 2022, some of them are still struggling to grapple with the concept. It just shows how difficult it is for fighting games to get out of that arcade era mindset. The pandemic really was the final nail in the coffin for arcades. And I think Tekken, Street Fighter, and all of them, I want to say they're feeling it, but not really. Arcades is this like niche idea that fighting games think they need. When the fighting games really change to fit the modern landscape, they break records. Tech 7 has broken a record almost every single year it's been out, sometimes even two or three records. Same thing for Mortal Kombat 11, even though that game was cut short, it was on pace to be the best selling Mortal Kombat of all time. You have Multiverses, a phenomenal game, breakout hit. You have so many fighting games, Guilty Gear Strive, KOF, that without the arcade era, are still going hard till today. The tweet here from Harada that inspired this video is responding to someone who says, is Tekken not popular in Asian markets? Harada responds and says, the popularity of major fighting game titles in Asia is about the same and not much different. And what he's saying with that is Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, all of the top tier fighting games, their player base in Asia is equal. He goes on to say, however, in terms of Tekken, the share alone is 3%. And if Asia is included, it does not even reach 10%. 10%. This number is incredibly low. Their online community really abandoned fighting games once the arcade era went away. And you can often argue too that it's the amount of money that can be won in these tournaments. Tekken you could win like $1,000, $5,000. In League of Legends, if it's the right tournament, it's the right time, you can win a million dollars. So that bounty increase is just gonna pull in a lot more players and those players is gonna be leaving somewhere. 50% of the player base, half is from Europe. 35 to 37% is North America. And the rest is another region. This right here, says everything we need to know about the current state of fighting games. If you look at Street Fighter and also Tekken, both of those games, the, the heart of the story is taking place in New York City. That's North America. Harada said, this is a long time ago now, but he said, we don't announce anything in Asia anymore, in Japan anymore. We go to the American events, like the Game Awards, like Summer Games Fest, like E3 because that's where everyone is at. And the reason why this is important is because since all of their players is now in EU and NA, they are gonna to have to conform to what those societies want. And this is the thing about Tekken 8 in comparison to Street Fighter 6. Street Fighter 6, they introduced a bunch of new characters, Jamie, Luke, and Kimberly. All of those characters speak English. It's very easy to understand and to relate to them. Street Fighter is making its game very relatable, throwing in some hip hop music and you know making it colors and they're really playing into that North American market. Tekken on the other hand, they're not really doing that and I don't know if they really can do that. In Tekken 7, they introduce new characters like Claudio who speaks Italian. They also introduce Leroy Smith who's actually from the heart of New York. So you can see that both of these games are trying to tailor themselves to fit the North America and fit Europe, also with Leah being a Polish prime minister. But I just wonder how much can Tekken do to really relate to the player base. And in Tekken, when you shift the conversation to everyone speaking English, it becomes very controversial. Even though when you go to parts of the world like Japan or Poland or a lot of these regions, they can speak English. They speak like three, four languages. But when you talk about the Tekken characters doing that, people really don't like it because it feels like the characters are not really themselves anymore. Like if you talk about Lars, this is the character who speaks Japanese, but he's not from there. 
you really cannot connect with that character or even see that character as one of your own because he's not speaking the way that you or your friends may do. The same thing for Joseph. When that character was first, first introduced into Tekken 7, the Filipino government and a lot of the people took issue with that character. They didn't like how that character portrayed the Philippines, the language difference, the style difference. You can see that it's very difficult for these fighting games to adapt to the new market. But at the same time, difficulty does not mean that it's not possible. Even though it's it's hard, I think Tekken 7 and Street Fighter has done this successfully. What's really gonna be make or break for these fighting games like Tekken 8 and Street Fighter 6 is the next iteration. Tekken 8 cannot have as many problems as Tekken 7. Street Fighter 6 cannot have the same launch as Street Fighter 5. If these games really struggle like all fighting games seem to do, I think they're really going to get lost in time. I really do have faith in all of these games because they have the budget, they have the resources, and they have the, the, the brain power to succeed. But it really comes down to execution. And in this video, I just want to talk about this because I think it's a, it speaks a lot to the behind the scenes side of fighting games. We often talk about frame data and tier lists and power levels and all that stuff. But this, this is the heart of the fighting games. This is the real stuff that's really important. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button and also leave a like on this video. I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to keep covering Tekken 8, Tekken 7, and a little bit of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. So if you're into that, also hit that subscribe button. But that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and bye bye.